In the videos prior to this video, we've entered all of our programs through the front panel or through paper tape or through cassette. But starting with this video going forward, we're going to start using Altair's floppy disk in order to load software. Now if you were the proud owner of a new Altair floppy disk, you might have been digging in the user's manual and seen a short little assembly program you could enter on the front panel to test a few basic functions of your drive. We're going to go ahead and single step through that program and see what it shows us. Now, rather than have you sit through me entering that program, it's already been put in here. It's a very simple program. The first two instructions select drive zero. So we're going to go ahead and step through that. This is a move immediate to load a value into the accumulator. And it's going to load a zero into the accumulator. That's how we select drive zero. The next instruction is an output. It's going to actually do an output to IO address 8. That's the drive select register in the floppy disk controller when we write to it. Right? This is the actual output operation taking place. If you remember back in our earlier videos, that's the output operation to an IO device and we can see it's going to port 8. We don't get to see what value is being written, but it's writing that 0 to select drive 0. As soon as we execute that, drive 0 is selected and the select light comes on on the front panel of the floppy disk. All right, the next instructions will load the head onto the disk. Here's another move immediate and it's moving a 4 into there. This bit happens to be the command bit to drop the head onto the floppy disk. So now we're going to do the output operation to do that. It's going to output to port 9. When we write to port 9, we can see that here again, that is a command register in the floppy controller and having that 4 bit on is what tells the controller to drop the head onto the floppy disk. Let's go ahead and execute that. At that point the head loads onto the floppy disk and now the head loaded light is on on the front. Alright, the next instruction is an input from IO address 9. So when we read from 9, this is actually the what's called the sector position register. What is this showing us? Let's take a look. Here we're doing the input from IO address 9 and we get a pretty interesting display before here. We haven't seen this kind of active display before when we're examining memory. What we're seeing here is essentially an open window to the sector position register and that register is getting updated rapidly by the controller card and we're seeing those updates. So what are we seeing here? Well the Altair floppy rotates at 360 RPMs. Uh, that's six times a second. So in a single rotation all the sectors in a track go by the head. Well, there's a total of 32 sectors in the Altair floppy in the track. So 32 sectors are going by 6 times a second. And that's what we're seeing here, is we're seeing those sector numbers going from 0 through 31 and these 5 bits right here. So this value is going from 0 to 31 6 times a second as those sectors are zipping by underneath the head. So we know we can select our drive, we know that we can load the head, and we know our sector position register function is working. All right, the next instruction is doing an input from IO address 8. This is the drive status register when we do a read. So here's the input. Now this is not as exciting as the sector position register, but we can see here that D7 is definitely dimmer than these other two lights that are on. That indicates that there's some activity there. So what is this? What we're looking at here is a flag that indicates that read data is available from a data sector as it's going under the head. This is normally uh, on or one when there is not data available. It goes low when there is data available. So this signal is going low at the start of each sector where the data begins and then it goes high for the short period in between sectors where there is no data. This light over here that's steady on happens to be the flag that says go ahead and write data. And again it's the same way where it's true when it goes off. So this is steady on meaning it's not time to write data. This is relatively dim, meaning that's been on quite a bit, indicating read data is available. All right, so that's all there is in that assembly language routine. Just gives us a good idea that some of the basic drive functions are up and working. All right, so let's go ahead and use this now. I've got uh, Altair Disk Basic inserted into drive zero in the floppy. How would I boot my computer from uh, floppy disk? Well, even though you have a floppy disk, you've got the exact same problem you had when trying to run from paper tape or cassette and that is that the Altair, when you turn it on, does not know anything about how to read the floppy disk, just like it didn't know how to read a paper tape or cassette. Now for paper tape and cassette, we would use the front panel to put in a bootstrap loader that gave the computer just enough smarts to read in a more sophisticated loader, which then would turn around and read BASIC for us. 
Unfortunately, we can't use that same technique for the disc because just to read the disc at all is dramatically more complex and it would be way too big a program to enter on the front panel. So the most common solution was to install a prom card in your system and on that card have Altair's disc bootloader ROM um, in order to make booting the disc easy. Alright, that disc bootloader ROM is in our system. It's at address 177400 up there in high memory. We'll examine that location. Alright, so now we're looking at 177400 and this is the first byte in the disc bootloader ROM. And again, on the Altair, when you've done an examine, you've also set the 8080's program counter to that address. So at this point, we're ready to run uh, this bootloader ROM. But, just like cassette loaders, we're going to have to set these front panel switches so that BASIC knows what kind of serial port is talking to our terminal. We're using a 2SIO port with one stop bit, and as before, this pattern of 0001 tells BASIC when it does get up and running that we are using a 2SIO board with one stop bit to talk to our terminal. Now normally we'd have to set these as well to tell the loader what device we're reading from. But in this case we know what device we're reading from. We're reading from the floppy. So these don't even matter when you're using the disk bootloader. Okay, that's it. Let's run it. We can watch some activity going on here. It's reading the disk. Okay, now it's all stopped. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Alright, as you can see, we're up and running. We've got our standard memory size prompt there. Uh, I'm going to type O for Oki data for the printer. Uh, as far as the disk numbers and files and these prompts, we'll go into what those mean in the next video where we demonstrate how to use Disk Basic. But basically, you can see we have booted using the disk and we're up and running. Alright, so that works great, but what if you couldn't afford to stick in or go out and buy a prom card after you just got through spending all that money on a floppy disk system. How could you possibly boot your system then if you didn't have a prom card? Well, just like you can boot BASIC using cassette or paper tape, you could actually load the code that is that disk boot loader prom. You could load that off of paper tape into RAM and execute it. So there was a version that fit into RAM that loaded from paper tape that you could then run and it would do the same thing as actually having that disk bootloader ROM up in high memory. So we're going to go through that procedure here and demonstrate that. But rather than make you watch me enter the bootstrap loader, um, we're going to go ahead and get that put in ahead of time. And we'll do a video cut and come back in just a second. Alright, we're back. And what we've done is enter a bootstrap loader into the computer just like we would to load BASIC. In fact, the specific bootstrap loader we entered is the same one we would have um, entered to load extended BASIC 4. So whenever you need to use the disk bootloader paper tape or cassette tape, the bootstrap loader you put in is the one for your serial board and the same thing that would have been used for extended BASIC 4. It just happens to use the same settings. Alright, now as before, we need to set these switches. When BASIC finally gets up and running, it's going to look at these first four. We're going to use the same settings we have been. That's a 2SIO board with uh, one stop bit. And when the cassette loader, I mean when the loader runs, it needs to know where it's getting its data. 011 tells us that it tells the loader that it's getting its data from the cassette. Alright, so that's just like we did for BASIC. Now instead of loading BASIC though, it's going to turn around and load the disk boot loader. Once the disk boot loader gets loaded, it runs. It's then going to do the same thing that the prom did. It's going to turn around and load the disk. All right, so let's go ahead and send the tape, get the tape started. All right, now what we see running here is the bootstrap loader reading in the second stage loader. That takes about 10 seconds. Uh, just like we saw loading basic. Okay, now we actually see the second stage loader running. It takes about another 10 seconds to load the disk boot loader, which is not that big a program. Pretty soon you'll see it start running. Okay, now the disk boot loader is running. It's pulling in basic. Now it's done, and basic should be up and running. So let's take a look back here at our screen. And sure enough, we've got basic up and running now. And in the next video, we'll go over what some of those prompts mean. 
All right, so there's two ways to get a disk booted. Disk boot loader ROM is the most convenient, but then if you didn't have that, you can still use cassette or paper tape and use the disk boot loader tape in order to get your disk up and running. All right, well, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate how to use Disk Basic. Now, the computer used for the demos today is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look and feel, the features and performance of a real Altair, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside. That way, you don't have to worry about damaging a vintage or collector's quality piece of equipment as you use it. It's a great way to experience things hands-on again without having to worry about damaging something of uh, museum quality. Be sure to visit AltairClone.com to learn more about this great computer.